Hello, Shannon from Audio Energy again, and today we're going to be looking at the second half of the Sorcerer's Ball from last week, so why don't you stick around and check it out. Okay, um, today we're going to be looking at the second part of the mix that I've been doing for Sorcerer's Ball. Um, if you want to know a bit of the history on that, go see part one. Um, and in that video we looked at uh, pianos and a little bit of the orchestral instruments and how I set that up. Um, also looked at a little bit of the drums and we're going to go into the drums a bit more today and I have a little bit of a listen to the guitars and what I've done there. Um, also uh, I did mention we'll look at, uh, just have a quick chat about the resource track, or the, sorry the source track and um, why they're important as well. So before I start I'd like to wish everyone a happy holiday season for whatever you're doing. And I hope that you uh, have a safe, safe holiday wherever you're travelling. Uh, if you're going up the coast, or you're going to the beach, or wherever you're driving, um, make sure you just be sensible. Don't drink and drive. Um, other people are out there too. They don't, they don't want to be run over and killed. Um, so just be safe. Have a good time. Hope you have a great New Year's. Uh, this will probably be the last video I'm doing for 2016. Uh, it's been a great year so far, so it's um, been a big year for me. And I've just started setting up all these videos and the video channel and things. I will be continuing in 2017, so I hope to see you there. In the meantime, let's um, get back to this. And I'm going to uh, just start this. And what I've done, essentially, is pop in all my MIDI channels uh, for my drums. And you can see here, uh, I've got my Easy Drummer. Uh, I've done some EQing, um, and this is a, essentially works on this particular bass track because I've multi-tracked all the bass, uh, and I've just sort of set that up uh, and EQed it the way I want. I've also put on a um, gate, okay, just to make the, the kick a little bit tighter and get rid of uh, some resonances and things that have come around. Uh, and also put a second EQ on there just to give a little boost in the bass there as well. I've gone through each track and EQed it. Um, and also put on some sends that I want to send to uh, the main track. I didn't actually do a second lot of um, uh, bus tracks for the drums because I was just using these and they can be transferable from audio and MIDI so I just kept them. On my bus channels um, what I've done is on the, um, on the reverb for my, uh, my snare and I did a little bit for the overheads as well, just to give them a little bit of extra brightness in case they might need that a little bit. Um, you can go to a website uh, by a fellow called Bobby Os Osinski, I think his name is, and he's got a bunch of tips there on how to do EQs and things. And I, there was one I picked up, I think he called this the Abbey Road EQ technique. And what it essentially is, I have my EQ channel here, uh, sorry, my reverb, reverb, sorry. And, um, yeah, so I have uh, a bit of a preset there, I have a preset here, and then I've just sort of tweaked it the way that I want it to sound as well. Uh, and it just gives it a little bit of roominess. Um, I'll give you a listen to that in, uh, very shortly. <clears throat> in the meantime, the Abbey Road EQ technique is basically um, limiting the range that you have, uh, that you your reverb is playing in and you're cutting out all of the lows and a fair bit of the highs and I think with the uh, Abbey Road one they cut <clears throat> up to about 600 at the low end and they roll down as well on the high end to about 5000 but you can go lower if you like and uh, and just play with that and then there's a little bit of a cut which I'll boost that up a little bit and just widen that just a little bit I'll boost that one back up and essentially what this does is you'll hear that there's a whole lot of resonance here um, on either side of this and by tightening this up it actually gets rid of a lot of that and, and helps sort of focus the reverb um, qualities uh, without a lot of that extra uh, space in the background and the dark space being filled up with uh, unnecessary noise. So what I'm going to do, uh, as I've shown you here, I'll put on these EQs but I can get rid of these now because uh, you, you've seen what they do. Essentially what I did <clears throat> to print these tracks um, I put in sends. Obviously, there's no input on this one because I have my um, my drummer, Easy Drummer instrument. So there's no input there. Uh, these are multi-channeled, okay, and sent out. Uh, each part, other part of the drum is sent out. If you know how to do that, that's great. Um, these sends here are then linked up to audio tracks. 
So if I change this around and just scroll up here, here's my drum tracks. They're going through, each of these are being multied out to these other channels. And then here's my audio track, the kick drums here, so my drums here. Um, and you simply just match your outs here to your inputs there and then run them down. Um, I didn't put a lot of EQ on because basically all the drums are the way I wanted it to sound is already done up here. Um, if anything, what I've done is maybe a tiny bit of EQ on a few of them and put some sends on. So say for my snare, just just a one band EQ just to cut out a little bit of noise. Uh, this one here, same thing. So on my audio tracks, my drums are pretty much already tight, sounding good, working through. Um, I put a little bit of gate on uh, the toms a little bit because they had a bit of resonance and they, I just didn't like that. Um, and then we run out through these uh, the same buses that I had for the MIDI tracks. Okay, so I don't need these MIDI tracks anymore, so I'm going to just hide them again. Hopefully this won't slow down when I'm running the... So I'll just do hide and make it active. There we are. So here's all my drum tracks. Okay, and I'm going to show you... Um, this EQ technique that I did, as I said, it's um, let's take these off. It is the Abbey Road technique by Bobby Alzinski, I think his name is. Um, I think it's he's got his website is 101 EQ tricks or mixed tricks, something like that. Uh, but just look up Bobby Alzinski, or you can look him up on YouTube. Um, he has a channel there as well. Uh, I might have him favorited in my YouTube favorites, so take a look there if you need to. Um, so anyway, we're just going to have a listen to what this sounds like. Here we go. Let's see if we can play a bit of this. And what I've also done is... Um, I'm just open this up a little. One thing I've also done as well is um, the sends that I'm coming from these these channels here, like my snare and my overheads, go to my uh, reverb box, and the reverb box is being sent, instead of going to here, uh, I just want all that to go down in my bus tracks. Uh, I've got a parallel pair for my reverb, and they're going to that, so one part of it's compressed, the other's not. Okay, so it's coming straight from my reverb bus all the way down to my um, mix bus uh, parallel compression here. Okay, I thought I'd try it out and it actually seems to work a little better. It's not being stifled by all these other uh, effects here and then going on. So it's just a direct channel straight out and I can actually control that a little bit better uh, and have direct control over that. And so I'll play that again and I'll show you the difference uh, with the EQ um, fixed the way that uh, according to this Abbey Road EQing. So you heard the difference there, and it's getting rid of a whole lot of that low end where there's really not a lot of noise apart from just nuisance. And instead of cutting or doing cuts on all that, just roll it off, get rid of it. Um, this is why they did at Abbey Road on a number of tracks, apparently. So I think it works well, and it sounds pretty nice, actually. It makes everything sound tight. Um, I'm going to give you a bit of a preview on um, how the song is sounding. Um, just going down here, let's have a quick look at these guitar tracks. So I've done two lots of rhythm and then for my bridge I've done a separate type of guitar here as well so and then I have my lead tracks um, and I basically double everything they're mono tracks and they're being sent to uh, stereo oxes as well um, so what I'm going to do is take them off and you can have a bit of a listen
see, um, I've got all my bases panned straight up the middle, uh, and we've gone over panning and stuff before, so I won't go into that. <clears throat> but let's have a little bit more of a look. Um, you can see where a lot of these ranges are playing. You can see that they're kind of down 20 to 25 to 20, uh, and then once they sort of, these are a little bit higher. Once um, they get through my uh, bus mix going through all this, um, it's obviously driving a little bit harder, and it's up around negative 15. Then they're sent to uh, my parallel buses, and I control the, uh, the, the energy coming out from there as well. Um, I have my, and so yeah, basically I, I, I have my um, compressed channel and my clean channel for each instrument. The drums clean, drums compressed, bass clean, bass compressed, and so forth. Um, the compressed channel obviously has a compressor on it. Um, and I pan them hard right and left for these. Um, and then the center for drums and bass, the rest are panned hard left and right. Um, you can go center for all of these, just a bit of a different effect, um, different stereo effects and things like that. Um, at the moment I'm just playing around with the mix and trying it out, seeing how it sounds. I then have my sub mix, and on my sub mix I have um, my tape and that's going to give a little bit of a sort of low end boost and a little bit of saturation as well over the whole sort of whole mix there as well. Um, have my <clears throat> and then all that's fed in. Sometimes I pull the gain down a, just a little bit on here so we're down 1.7 and then when it's feeding to my master channel the overall is about 16 to 14 something like that. It's probably still a little bit high but it doesn't really matter. Um, you can play around with that and once you put it in mastering you're going to be reducing things and just polishing things off a little bit as well. Um, all right. Let's see. We're going to. So here's my lead channels, <clears throat> and essentially what I did when I was recording these, um, I did have it set up through an amplifier uh, and running through some microphones, but I really wasn't happy with the way it was coming out, and unfortunately, the way that I was mixing too. Um, uh, just trying to get a balance through my interface of having the higher levels of guitar with the high levels of playback of the, the tracks. Um, did make it a little bit difficult, I'm not in the best recording room either, so I tried a different approach and essentially I just had my guitar running into my wah pedal, into a uh, saturator uh, distortion pedal uh, and into an EQ. I removed the EQ because I didn't like the way that sounded, so I put it through directly into my, um, my little mixer here, it's a 12 channel mixer, and then ran that, oh sorry, also DI'd it into the mixer and then ran that into um, my interface and I, I was pretty happy with the way it came out. Um, so by doing that it sort of tended to settle things down a little bit as well. Um, I essentially did two lead tracks um, for each section and then did some backup as well. So this is my um, this is my chorus parts. Okay. And there you go. So that's, that's all the tracks. Let me fit them in. So this part here So these are all my lead tracks. Uh, so I have two leads for the main lead, the main lead sections. This is the bridge section, uh, and this is my chorus uh, melody, this part here, you'll hear this. And again, all I really did while I'm doing these, so I lay them down, they're quite raw, then, um, by the way, they're also panned center. They're all panned center. I recorded them panned center. It's easy to hear. Um, I then EQ them. And I just cut all of that lower end off, get rid of the this middle around the sort of higher muddy area, uh, and then roll it down a fair bit because my guitar is really, um, uh, what would say, it has um, a very high sort of high end frequency, very scratchy and all that sort of thing. I'm not big on that, I had to really curl it off. Uh, so I did all those, <clears throat> went through each one. Each EQ is actually a little bit different uh, depending on what the sound I was getting and going for. And then I put on my mix bus, obviously got some slate tools and also got a compressor on there as well, just to give it a bit of lift. Um, I then sent an, uh, the 
from my main bus, I sent a mix to uh, my reverb, and it's just a short blue reverb, very short, you won't even notice it. Um, the, well, the seconds are actually quite long, I should reduce that. Um, and I also uh, had it send to a delay channel, and then I automated that delay where I wanted to have a little bit more of an effect um, as it was coming through. So if you'd like to see that, um, here they are here. Here's my channel, so my delay, it's just volume, just made some adjustments there, and just really peaked it up a little bit here and there where I wanted it to really stand out and jump out. Um, but essentially just kept most of the level um, pretty good and standard. Uh, again, the lead reverb, uh, there's no automation on that, it's just what it is uh, running through. Now, with the... Um, the orchestral stuff as well down here um, again did my mix made sure everything kind of blended in as best as possible put on a mix channel got some stuff that would uh, put some mixes and things that would just kind of glue everything I like everything just trying to be glued as tightly as possible compressors do it uh, EQ doesn't really do it that much but uh, other saturators and things like that can do it as well and just you want your, your mix to sort of be bonded by the end of the mix um, and once it gets to here then you can do a final when you're mastering you can do a final um, uh, mix and we'll, I'll do a quick video on um, mas mastering this maybe early in the new year or even next week maybe I, I might do one more video I don't know so look I hope this clears it up and you have a bit of a listen to it and you can hear that it's coming along pretty good just uh, run some piano here okay so here we go here's the mix I'll just pause that for a minute. Oh, it's running again, isn't it? Okay, well, we know where that is. When you're doing a mix bus on here and you have your uh, clean channel a little bit louder than your compressed channel because when everything's compressed, you're going to really hear that squashy sound. You want the compression to just basically reinforce the uh, sound level and the energy level of uh, the original instruments when they're running clean. Um, it's, it, except for a couple, I mean, if you really want that nice punchier drums, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, you give a little bit more to that um, that compressed channel. Same with the uh, pianos at the moment. I just want the pianos to sound um, just full and wide, things like that. And uh, you can have this in here. If I pull this down, you can hear that it's... It almost helps the stereo field a little bit as well. This makes everything a little brighter and a little stronger. Everything seems to be seeing a lot more level in your mix. So it's a very important stage that I always do for everything, no matter what films, everything. Um, it's just the way I do things. You may not do it that way. With my strings, um, again, same thing. And it's really reliant on um, switch over for a minute. That's where I'm at. It's really reliant on your compressor and I'm using the move for this. Now see I've got the glue going there so it's not really driving hard into it. There's not a lot of uh, makeup gain. The threshold, you know, that's digging in pretty deep um, mainly because I've reduced the gain on uh, the instrument mix bus. So um, yeah I mean it, it just depends. I can drive this really, I can drive this input harder and have the makeup gain probably still sit pretty still and then it's going to drive this right up and it's going to be too hard to control so I want to bring that down um, but you can see that it's, re it's really going to it, having that compressed channel really helps everything start to blend in and mix um, so I'll jump to, let's get rid of this for a minute and I'll jump to where the drums come in almost, uh, let's, let's go to about here Here is a little bit of the woods. Here the legato string. A uh, bit of brass going on there. So quite deep in the mix, you can't hear it that much. Um, I've got two different types of the main strings. The one at the bottom is playing. So if I want that drum to sound more boosty, I can put the 
about up. Also with the uh, the lead guitar, uh, the lead guitar here, yeah, I can really make that I can really make that step up and and sort of step over everything else just with a little bit of a nudge here and a little bit of a nudge there. Uh, can get a little bit hard to control, but you just want to listen to it over and have a good listen. So that's the mix in general. I might do a mastering one maybe next week. It just depends what time I have in this whole hustle bustle new year. I hope you've had a great year so far and the new one to come. Take it easy over the holidays. Stay safe. And it's Audio Energy. I'm Shannon Rima. Uh, subscribe, submit. Send it to your friends for Christmas present. Say, here's a great guy. He knows how to do some mixes pretty well. He's got some interesting ideas. Spread it around. Go crazy. Thanks a lot. See ya.